Robert Baden Powell, a soldier, spy, author, artist, actor, storyteller, educator, and chief scout of the world. August 1st, 1907, Brown Sea Island near Poole in Dorset, 20 boys, eight days, fun, adventure, and the first scout camp. Hello, I am Scouter David, the assistant curator at the Scouts Canada National Museum. I will be joined by our curator, Scouter Gord, and one of our archivists, Scouter Lynette. The museum's staff are volunteers, and we must meet the same safe scouting requirements as every scout leader or scouter as we are called today. The National Museum is in the Scouts Canada National Headquarters building, the one behind the totem pole on Baseline Road in Ottawa. Our collections include scouting artifacts and memorabilia from Canada and around the world. Scouting in Canada is open to all youth. There are five youth sections, each with an age appropriate focused program, law, promise and motto. There are also registered scouters working with every section. Beaver Scouts are grouped in lodges within a colony. Their motto is sharing, 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 and their promise is simple and easy to learn. I promise to love God and to help take care of the world, or alternatively, I promise to be kind and to help take care of the world. Cub Scouts meet as a pack, but are grouped in dens or sixes of six or seven youth. Their motto is, do your best. The law of the pack is, the cub respects the old wolf, the cub respects himself, herself. And it is my favorite of the five laws. Scouts normally work in patrols, but for meeting openings and closings and ceremonies, they come together as a troop. Their motto is the well-known phrase, be prepared. Venturer Scouts meet and work together as a company. Their motto is challenge, and it is the company members who decide what challenge or challenges they will tackle. The Rover motto is service, and these young adults work together as a crew to deliver the service they have chosen. Badges, badges, and more badges. There are regional, national, area, group, program badges and awards, special events and activity crests. To earn a badge or award, the youth must successfully complete one or more compulsory and several optional requirements of their choice. The, the earned badge is quickly sewn on the uniform before the next meeting so all can see the achievement. What is the difference between the King Scout and the Queen Scout awards? Look at the crown closely and you will see for yourself. The one on the left is the King Scout Award. The Stalag 383 Rover crew helped the imprisoned men serve the ordeal, survive the ordeal, but came with a risk. Scouting had been outlawed in Germany during the war, and the prison guards would conduct random checks and searches so that the rovers had to be extra careful. The program for Northern Scouts and Cubs focused on developing the skills and confidence needed to survive the harsh and dangerous environment of Northern Canada. The engineering badge pictured on the left is the second of seven similar designs that were used from 1909 to 1963. Badges such as air navigator, draftsman, 
electrician, starman, weatherman, chemist, and computer also fit the STEM criteria, and many are still used today, but have a different name. Scouter Gord, the museum curator, will take you through the next chapter. Thank you, Scouter David. Jamborees are a gathering of scouts in a camping environment of which there are many different types. Jamboree on the air, and Jamboree on the internet, which are annual events. Canadian or national jamborees, which can be found somewhere each year, as can regional and provincial jamborees. World jamborees occur every four years. Over two million scouts take part each year in this technological jamboree. Joda, or Jamboree on the Air, allows scouts to talk with other Joda scouts throughout the world and any other amateur radio. For instance, an amateur radio on an old US submarine museum. Operation of VE3SHQ is now made much easier since the permanent antenna has been installed. Jyoti or Jamboree on the internet can be accessed by a scout at home using his or her own computer, but will miss out on the camaraderie of other scouts taking part of a group such as at the museum. Canadian Jamborees are scouts involving thousands of scouts taking part in an assortment of provided activities. Evenings include making new friendships not only with Canadian scouts, but with scouts from attending international contingents. Many, state, many scouts take part in one of the Jamboree's major activities, badge trading. Though not encouraged, neckerchiefs and uniforms are sometimes traded. Canada is not the only country to hold a national museum. Many other scouting countries hold national Jamborees of which contingents of Canadian scouts attend. Jamborees result in many artifacts that enter the museum and private collections. These include items made specifically for Jamboree and items made at the Jamboree by the participants as shown here. The story of a Jamboree can be recorded by the Jamboree newspaper, sometimes republished as a bound volume. Jamborees have been recorded on film, videotape, DVDs, and even on YouTube. World jamborees occur every four years <coughs> and are for venturous scouts. The multicolored tents are those of Canadian contingent in, 19, in 2019. The first scout rally showed here shows how fast scouting movement grew from its inception in 1907 and 1908 in Canada. Since the rally was a coronation occasion, it was likely only attended by scouts from the then British Empire. The museum has more artifacts from this event than any other to date. A large contingent of Canadian venture scouts attended this jamboree held at a spectacular Boy Scouts of America Scout Reserve in West Virginia in 2019. The next World Jamboree is scheduled for 2023 in South Korea. Hopefully COVID will be under control by then for the Venture Scouts to enjoy fully this event. To see what these events are like, look to YouTube where several videos are available to watch. Like any artifact, the story is who owned it, how old is it, what does it represent, and is it unique? The owner may even have a story in his own right. One unique Canadian artifact is the original Bobby Gimby score of the Canada song for Canada's centennial in 1967. Scouts Canada gets one cent for every time it's played. Scouting for Boys was originally published in six booklets, two weeks apart. 
the museum has a set of these booklets and they could very well be the first printing. Mafeking was the center of a siege in the Boer War in South Africa. The soldier in charge was no other than a man by the name of Baden Powell. They're not strictly scouting artifacts, they do connect to the founder of the scouting movement. While most of the collection are cast metal, some figurines are wooden. One or more of the wooden figures has been carved out of solid wood. An unusual item is the paper sculpture. A cutout booklet was made with all the pieces to make your own Baden Powell. Our assistant curator, David Na Dave Salda David, will take over. Flags have always been important to scouting. Along with Canada's national and, and provincial flags, we have a Scouts Canada flag, many section flags, and several jamboree flags on display around the museum. The coronation flag here is the oldest flag we have. It is also quite unique. Thanks to the Allied troops, this tattered old scout flag toured France during World War I. It also survived the many battles it witnessed. If only it could talk. If you have ever sat around a campfire, you know that while your front roasts, your back gets colder, but a blanket will help keep you warm. One day, an unknown scout member realized that the smoky, dirty blanket he used at campfires would be perfect to showcase, showcase all his badges and crests. The idea caught on. Every campfire blanket is different. The design is the choice of the owner, not scouting. We actually have two camp vests on display. One belonged to a scouter, the other to his wife, also a scouter. Both vests were made using the same pattern, but the layout of the badges on each is different. Scouting events allow scouts of all ages to interact with the community and to showcase their skills. Scouts contribute to our communities in many ways. Honor guards for royalty, helping where possible, honoring true heroes, and helping community food banks. The possibilities are endless. The scout shirt is a scout's prized possession as the badges, cords and awards and pins adorning it show off the individual's achievements. The shirt pictured here dates from around 1930, but it was so important to the young scout named Gus Malou that he kept it for his whole life. A scout shirt like the Rover Scout shirt here that belonged to Rover Scout George Zealous provides information on the members' years of service, training, awards, and such as the Jack Cornwall Award for High Character and Courage. Youth members in any program section of Scouts Canada are eligible for this award. A nominee for the Cornwall decoration, the small photograph, must be especially recommended for preeminently high character, devotion to duty, and specific acts of physical courage, or must have undergone great suffering in, in a, a heroic manner. Individual contributions to special, local, or national projects, such as the Scout War efforts during World War I, also get recognized.
Scouting memorabilia includes not only uniforms and badges, but also trinkets, jewelry, dishes, tea coffee sets, bookends, and many other items related to scouting. Plates and anything that has something to do with scouting is collectible. Collectors are avid and their collections are diverse. Scouter Lynette will now take over. Personal scrapbooks, photo albums, group and individual diaries create a very different view of scouting that tells the scouting story from the member's perspective. The earliest diaries we have are from the coronation of King George V in 1911. They reveal a less formal account of the trip, including their adventures within England. Individuals, groups, and large contingents come to visit the museum, and each has a story about scouting to tell us. A Cub Scout was thrilled to see a photo of her great grandfather as a 14 year old scout. The Crowborough Network Scouts from England visited the museum after the 2019 World Jamboree. They were surprised to see a plate on display made by the Crowborough Scouts as a thank you to Scouts Canada for inviting them to the 1981 Canadian Jamboree. They had no idea that the group had ever visited Canada before. Group neckerchiefs are referred to in scouting as neckers. They come in all different color combinations. One cub, upon finding his group necker hanging from the rafter said, we are famous, we are part of history. Artifacts are regularly taken on tour. Displays are created for special occasions such as group anniversaries or special camps. One of the most popular items that all visitors not only get to see but get to touch is the Baden-Powell totem from the 1929 World Jamboree. The youth always like to touch something that Baden-Powell touched. Each traveling box is created for specific events. The box shown here is one taken to Jamborees. The Scouts Canada National Museum was the dream of Scouter Al Griffin. He used to say the history of scouting belongs to the youth. Thus, the focus of the museum is a place where the youth and all visitors can discover a little bit about the history of scouting. I'll now hand the microphone back to Scouter David. Thank you, Scouters Lynette and Gord, for helping me tell the story. And a huge shout out to everyone who had a hand in creating it. We hope you enjoyed this short presentation on the Scouts Canada National Museum and that you will come and see us in person one day. The museum is closed right now. But if you are interested in arranging a tour of the museum, call the number shown and leave a message or email us to request a reservation for a tour when COVID-19 restrictions are lifted and we will, can all safely enter the facility. Thank you for taking the time to check out the Scouts Canada National Museum. <laughs>